All right, folks, well, we're doing something a little bit different today. This video is gonna be a little less produced, a little bit more raw. But if you're interested in going snow camping or winter camping for the first time, definitely stick around and check it out. So for typical followers of the channel, you guys know that most of the time I go off the beaten path to do my camping. Even when it comes to snow camping, I'll go well off the beaten path into locations where I could find myself in a bit of a pickle if it really snowed hard and I'd have to really rely on all of my recovery gear and skills to be able to get myself out of that location. And I fully get that for many, that's more challenge than you really wanna take on, especially if it's your first time snow camping. So I've got Megan out in front of me and we're gonna show you guys an option that you can try if you wanna to try to get your feet wet snow camping. So we had a snowstorm that kind of came in over the last couple of days and we've even gotten snow in the lower land. So there's a lot of people stopping the chain up to get over the pass because it is definitely icy and snowy going up over today. So a couple quick tips when you're driving up in ice and snowing like this is take advantage of your four wheel drive if you have it, put it in four wheel drive, it's totally fine. If you're on hard packed snow and ice, it's not gonna hurt anything in your rig and it will give you a lot more control. Also, make sure you're giving plenty of space between you and the driver ahead of you. You wanna make sure that you have plenty of time to stop. Four wheel drive will help keep you going, but it doesn't help you stop at all. One other little uh, pro tip is make sure your windshield wiper fluid is full and it has the de-icer type in it so that way you can keep a clear vision in front of you. Well, we've gotten to where we're gonna to camp tonight. We're actually in a ski parking lot. Megan is gonna go spend some time doing some snowboarding, which is the first time she's gotten to go snowboarding since her accident. But ski parking lots are definitely a place that you can go and do some uh, winter camping. You do need to check with the resort, make sure they do offer overnight camping and where they offer it. Some places have it for free, some places you have to pay a little bit. But the nice thing about doing using a resort like this is there's people around you don't have to worry about getting stuck they plow the roads you can experience the whole snow camping experience without have all the worries of being out somewhere where you might get snowed in so you've done a lot of snow camping right yeah i've actually been up here quite a few times it's nice because they do keep it really nicely plowed if you have four-wheel drive even if you don't have a high clearance vehicle you tend to be able to get in and out pretty easily right so it just takes a little bit of the edge out of coming out and enjoying a snow camping experience all right folks well i'm just starting to get some things organized in my van megan has taken off and gone snowboarding for the afternoon uh, I'm going to sit around and hang out. I've got a few things I want to get organized in my van uh, before we start to set anything up. Plus, there's just a lot of people here right now, and we're hoping that some people will clear out as the afternoon uh, gets on. And we're really hoping that uh, we can move Megan's van up here and we can get a spot uh, with the two vans next to each other. I do have plans to do a campfire tonight. We brought some firewood up and uh, we've got plans for dinner. So I'm really hoping that, like I said, that we can uh, get some space next to each other. Now, things aren't really going according to our original plan. When Megan used to come up here, there was a whole nother section that used to be open to overnight camping that recently was closed this year. So we're finding ourselves having to kind of squeeze into some area that we weren't really expecting. Uh, it's, it's definitely put a, a bit of a damper in some of our plans, but we're still going to try to make the best of it.
All right, guys, so things are starting to calm down here at the resort. A lot of people have started to vacate. There is night skiing, so there will be a few people still hanging around, but uh, it's definitely not as packed as it was earlier today. And of course, you know, this is part of the downside of doing this type of camping is you're gonna have to deal with a lot of people. It's not like when I go out in the middle of nowhere and uh, you know, I'm all by myself and it's super serene. But with that serenity comes a level of risk. So you're just gonna have to weigh what, you're, what you want. If you want the comfort of knowing that you're gonna be safe and everything's gonna be okay, this is, you know, you're gonna have to deal with people if you want serenity and, and be all on your own, you're gonna to have to take a level of risk to be able to have that. So, you know, you just gonna have to weigh those things. But as it is right now, it is calming down. So what I'm gonna do is get the fire pit down, get the awning out and uh, get us a little fire going. So when Megan returns from snowboarding, she has a nice warm fire to hang out by. All right guys, so I'm just starting to process some of this wood down and get ready to have a campfire tonight. Now this is all bought wood. I went to the grocery store and just bought bundles of wood. Typically if I was out uh, doing a normal winter camp, I would just get my chainsaw out and cut all the firewood I need. But obviously uh, due to the situation, that's not an option. So, you know, if, you don't, if you're in a situation like this or you just don't have a chainsaw, you know, bought firewood is a great way to go. And in fact, sometimes if I know I'm not gonna get to a place until late at night, I'll just stop and pick up a few bundles just to get me through that first night and then cut wood in the morning. So if you're just getting started and you wanna go out and do some winter camping, having some good basic woodsman skills is definitely gonna be beneficial to you. Even if you have all a lot of nice modern gear, just having some good basic old, old school woodsman skills will help you in the long run. A lot of my early content when I first started the channel was bushcraft type content and I still use those skills today. Oh man, I tell you what, this feels nice now getting a little bit of a fire going. Now again, if you're going to be camping somewhere like this, you're going to need some kind of above ground fire pit. There's a lot of different options out there. Uh, this is the pop-up fire pit. I do have a video review on this, but there's also the solo stove, which is very popular. And I've also checked out the BioLite, which was not my favorite. This is definitely my favorite fire pit of the ones I've tried. So tonight we're going to have um, chili with Jason's deer sausage and we're gonna make it in the Instapot and thankfully we have the Jackery with us because my battery is just not quite enough for the Instapot, so. If you wanna power an Instapot with a Jackery, we found that the Jackery 1000 has sufficient amount of wattage for most dishes that you would wanna cook. But if you would like to add the air fryer attachment, you will need to bump up to the Jackery 1500. Jackery is a sponsor of the channel, and if you would like to check out their line of products, be sure to use the link in the description. And I tell you what, there is nothing like a hot bowl of venison chili on a cold winter's night. Yes, this is really delicious. Yeah, you did a good job, babe. The Instapot, super handy when uh, even though we're camping, having the Jackery available to run it. Uh, yeah, you can definitely make this with a Dutch oven or something like that if you want to, but 
the Instapot does make things a little bit on this, a little bit simpler, and being able to cook inside the van is really nice because it is warm in here with Megan's diesel heater. But I think, guys, I think we're gonna eat this, and then we're gonna go sit by the fire for a little bit longer, enjoy that, and then not off for the night. First day of snowboarding. I am tired. My legs hurt. I didn't fall. I fell like once, but I didn't fall too hard. But still, it's it's very tiring. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep good tonight. So, anyways, guys, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna eat this, relax a little bit, enjoy the nice evening we have out there, and we'll catch you guys in the morning. Again, always check the regulations of the ski resort. Wood fires were permitted in past years, but we were not aware that this year they had changed their policy. They now only allow propane fire pits, so we were asked nicely to extinguish our fire. It's unfortunate that we were no longer allowed to have wood fires in this location, but this policy did come about due to abuse of the privilege in the past. So if you're camping in a location that does still allow wood fires, Make sure to completely extinguish your fire and leave no trace. All right, folks, well, we're just enjoying some coffee. Daisy and I are just kicking back and relaxing in the van. It's still pretty early yet, it's still dark outside. Megan's still asleep over in her van. Still pretty quiet out in the parking lot. You got a little bit of activity going with uh, snow plows, uh, working to clear the, clear the parking lot. But other than that, the skiers and snowboarders haven't really started to show up, so it's still fairly peaceful out there really nice right here in the van it's nice if you're gonna do some winter camping to have some form of heat source in my case I've got the Propex heater which the thermostats right here and then the heater is actually down underneath the bed blowing warm out air out into the van Megan has a Chinese diesel heater kind of the same setup except for obviously diesel mines propane and uh, but yeah having I think a heating source if you're thinking about trying winter camping for the first time uh, will definitely make the whole experience a lot more pleasurable for you you know just having a place that you can get in and out of the cold and have it be warm to change clothes you know that kind of stuff it just makes things a lot nicer even just to sit back for a minute and have a cup of coffee in in a warm area can make the whole time the whole experience a lot nicer so but anyways, guys, we're going to, like I said, we're going to finish this cup of coffee. I'm going to let Megan sleep in a little bit, but when she does get up, we're going to make some breakfast. And uh, I think she's going to try to hit the hills one more time today.
So we're making some breakfast burritos. I'm just gonna slice up the potatoes to parboil them so they're softer before I fry them. All right, guys. Well, Megan's got our breakfast burritos made. These things are super delicious. A little Taco Bell hot sauce to finish them off. But yeah, thanks for the great breakfast, babe. These You're are welcome. delicious. Mm. But yeah, we're gonna eat these. Megan's gonna get geared up, go do some snowboarding again this morning. Um, I'm gonna start working on this video so that I can get it out to you guys and uh, So we're gonna go ahead and call this video an end here And I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope you guys got some tips some ideas that might help you on your first winter camping experience or snow camping experience If you did, please do give the video a like if you have any comments or questions Leave those down below and we'll catch you guys again outside